Very few people understand the stock market. Football Index gives users the opportunity to trade and make money with something that they love, the beautiful game. So I'm with the legend Mickey Hazard. Mickey, 1-1 at home to Watford. What is going wrong? Um, well, uh, obviously confidence is not what it should be. Um, you can see that the, the quality of the play, which we've become accustomed to over the last four or five years, um, is a little bit slower, um, which is a sign of a lack of confidence. Um, the ball, the movement is not as well-timed as it normally is. Um, which means that players are more static and easier to stop um, and players who lack confidence sort of don't move on to balls and wait for it to come to them rather than be moving into it don't move into space they stand waiting so it's um, it's a culmination of things uh, but the one credit that you have to give them is they kept going right till the very end and almost in the end maybe undeservedly so they could have nicked the game um, Watford will go away from this game believing they should have won and probably they had the best chances and the, or the best positions. They got in so many good positions that they didn't exploit. Um, so disappointing result, um, disappointing performance but great character, they, they hung in, they kept going, uh, they never quit, they never stopped. Um, so somewhere the fight back from the loss of form, from the loss of confidence, it has to start somewhere and sometimes hanging in there when you're behind and, and nicking a late goal can sometimes be the turning point. Um, but we have to um, try and look beyond the results. We have to try and make sure that Tuesday against Red, Red Star Bel Belgrade, uh, Belgrade, we are we are ready and you know go out and believe. Believe there's there's, you know, there's no there's nothing to be afraid of. We're good players. We're a good team. We don't have to be afraid of anyone because we know that we're capable of beating anyone. Um, and until you throw the negative thoughts out of your mind, um, they will play a part in your performance. And uh, I, that's what I sort of feel at the minute, that um, we're not quite playing with the fluency and the confidence that we need to play to, to win games. Why not though, Mickey? Because we've played nine Premier League games, we've won three, we've drawn three, we've lost three. It's a mediocre um, start to the season, is it, C compared to other seasons? This is a sixth season in charge under Pochettino. It's a surprise to everyone, isn't it? Well, I think that um, we've had it good for three or four or five years, maybe. Um, and we've turned up at games knowing we're going to win, um, knowing that we're going to play well. And for whatever reason, um, this season feels slightly different. Um, you know, we've, we've eight for new players. We got some new players. And, and I always say that new players, sometimes they gel quickly, sometimes they don't gel for six months, a year. Sonny was a prime example. His first season, he was nowhere near the player he is today. It took him quite a while to settle. Um, and that seems to be happening to our new players. And, not just, and the impact that two or three new players can have on the squad. Um, you know, I personally think that you have to rise above everything, you have to rise above transfer speculation, you have to rise above end of contracts, you have to rise above new signings and, and loss of form and, and be the bigger man and grow. Um, you know, because the, oh, there's only one way out of a loss of form, and that's the work hard, fight, tackle, chase, hurry, do all of those things first, first, before you do anything else. You've got to work your socks off, you've got to fight, you've got to tackle, you've got to chase, you've got to harry the opposition into mistakes. And slowly when you do that, um, your game comes back together. Well, every, every footballer player that's ever lived has lost confidence um, and their form's not been great or lost form. But there's only one way through it and that's to fight and fight and fight. And then you get through it and you think you come out the other side with much more char character and much more able to deal with the same situation a year later. Are you worried the fact that we can't even beat the bottom of the league uh, side today, uh, draw 1-1, a scrape 1-1, next Premier League game is against Liverpool who have won 8 out of 8 and we're playing them away. Are you worried for next week? No, nope, not worried at all because I know that I've been in situations, I mean when I played at 
Manchester United or when I played at Liverpool or Arsenal, oh, I was ready. I was up for it. I didn't need motivating. I knew what was coming. I knew it was going to be the toughest, one of the toughest games of the season. Um, so when I went prepared for the game, I was prepared for everything that hit me. Um, and sometimes when you're playing, like when I played Halifax Town, sometimes I was so flat, I couldn't get myself going because I knew the game was going to be easy, I knew that we could win the game at a stroll and often that was the game where I, I didn't play, perform anywhere near my best because I wasn't motivated for it. Um, but the Man United's, the, 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 the Arsenal's, the Liverpool's, teams like this, um, if you're not up for that, you can't be up for anything. So yes, we know it's going to be incredibly tough, but that might just be the game that turns our season on its head uh, and gets us going again and, 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 and we know that over the past three or four seasons, but Liverpool and us were pretty, pretty much even throughout that. But last season, for instance, when we lost 2-1, Sissoko was clean through with the keeper to beat minutes before they got the lucky winner. You know, So we know we can go there and win. Um, we know that we're capable, more than capable of beating them, um, but we also know it's going to be a tough game. But hey, if you don't get yourself up for that one, then you're going to go and lose four or five. But you've got to be ready. Mickey, is that not a frustrating thing? Because I feel, um, go back two or three years, we were very, very level with Liverpool and, and such like. And if we would have invested like they have, we'd be up there and we'd be challenging for the Premier League. And now it looks like that we are miles away from them. Um, we're gonna, it looks like that we're going to lose a lot of our, our players as well. Ericsson, Toby and Jan, who are, are three first-team players, it looks like they're going to lose them at, at least at the end of the season. Is that a worry, a big worry? No, because I don't think the gulf is as wide as it appears it is second. Um, you know, you must, four months ago we were in a Champions League final. Um, but doesn't that make it worse? The fact that we were so close... And yet, if we had a little bit more investment, yes, we but, would be but, so but, far ahead. Well, we did invest in the summer. We invested but a lot more. Four players. Well, a, a, a lot more. We spent over 100 million pounds. Um, that's a lot of money to invest. What I'm saying is, is that um, Liverpool are not that far ahead of us. Of course, it looks like it at this moment in time because we're on a down. Um, but on any given day, we can beat Liverpool. No, no question. Um, but. With all the speculation surrounding Jan, Toby, Danny, uh, Christian, um, I don't agree that it should play on your mind, but maybe it has played, a, and obviously it's played on Poch's mind because he's commented, uh, commented about um, it, there's been a lot of uncertainty surrounding the, the squad and training, etc. Et um, I, I don't necessarily agree that it should, but that's the way I thought about the game. The way other people think, that's that's their choice. I don't think that any of those things should influence the way you are on a match day. Um, but you can see there's, there's an uncertainty in our play, um, but it'll take something to make it click. A great goal, a great move, a great this, a great that, uh, and Liverpool could just be the game that triggers a great run from us. I really believe that. We're not a bad side, it doesn't happen overnight. We are a very, very good side who's struggling um, with their confidence at the minute and, and, and somehow, somehow when you're struggling with your confidence, everything goes against you. Um, but I really believe this side will be back competing near the top of the Premier League and it wouldn't surprise me at all if at the end of the season this team went and, went and won a trophy. There's all these great seasons that we've had, we've not won one. Now we're having a, a, a below average season so far. I bet we could win one at the end of the season. Do you see much investment in January or not? Um, I, I don't know. I mean, I read a quote, of, two quotes of Potchers that one he was going to bring plays in in the tra transfer window January, and then yeah, a couple of days ago I read that he's changed his mind because he trusts and believes in these players. What we have to focus on is the fact that when we didn't make players, sign players in the window, we reached the Champions League final. We competed at the top of the Premier League and we hardly signed a player. Suddenly we've signed four in the window and we're struggling a bit. So it has its pluses and of course I agree we need to sign players, but only players that are going to make us better and we've got to give them time to settle and gel with the rest of the boys. But um, we're not that far away. Just trust me on this and it's hard at times like this, it's very hard to trust. 
but just trust me, this side's still a good side. Mickey, a lot of fans, including myself, would, would argue the fact that Danny Rose, he was talking to Watford um, in the summer, wanted to leave, Jan and Toby out of contract, um, Serge Aurier has said more than enough that he wants to leave. That is our whole back four that sounds very uncertain that they want to leave. Does that worry you? Well, it would worry me if they all left, yes. Um, but again... But the way they're talking and the way that they're not signing a new contract. Without knowing uh, the behind the scenes reasons why they are not signing a new contract, um, it's difficult to comment on their reasons. What I'm, commenting, what I'm commenting on is the fact that, will they leave? Would I leave if I was them? If I would I see out my contract and leave? Okay, let's take a look, take a look. They've got the best stadium in the world. They've got one of the best managers in the world. They've got the best training facilities in the world. And the future is incredibly bright. Mm. And if they leave, where, they, where are they going to go? That offers them better than what this club's got. Of course, yeah. Real Madrid, Barcelona. Say, yeah. okay. How many of them are going to get signed by Real Madrid, Barcelona? Uh, how many other football clubs can offer those players what we, you know, over the next four or five years, what they're going to have at this football club? Mm. Remembering that Toby's 32, Jan's yeah. 32, um, they're not going to be signed for the future of a new club. Uh, would, would Real Madrid come in for Toby or, or, or Jan at this moment in their career at the age of 32? Mm. They might do, but it would surprise me because you know, with the, if, you, if you pay 35, 40 million for, for Toby and Jan, you're basically writing it off plus their salary, etc. You're writing it off because you're not going to get a return. Because you're going to sign a three or four year contract. So, okay. so you're going to write that money off. How many clubs would do that? How many clubs could afford to do that? So yeah. you have to question where these guys are going to go. If they're 24, 25, different animal, different animal. But at this stage, I'm not sure any of them are going to leave. I really am not. Uh, because there's only a few top clubs that uh, is worth leaving this club for. Mick, I've got to ask, um, it's been speculated so much in the media and on Twitter, and of course I know you're a big Twitter user. Um, do you think that Pochettino has actually lost the dressing room? Because there has been so much talk about it, of uh, players aren't playing for him, um, players don't bother um, about him anymore, and you know, what are your thoughts on that? I think it's an absolute load of cods, um, and, and if, 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 if players decide they don't want to play for the manager, mm. then that for me is a massive weakness of the player, not the manager. Um, because every footballer player that pulls on the, the white shirt of Tottenham Hotspur Football Club, they don't play for Maurizio Pochettino, they don't play for Keith Burkenshaw, yeah. they don't play for Bill Nicholson, yeah. they play for Tottenham Hotspur Football Club. And when you pull that white shirt on, sorry I'm getting emotional here, when you pull that white shirt on, this is Tottenham Hotspur Football mm. Club, mm. and you give your everything for this club. Yeah. I never thought about, oh, I'm playing for Keith. Yeah. I'm playing for Keith Birkenshaw. No, I'm playing for Tottenham Hotspur Football Club. So whatever riff, I remember Steve Archibald, in my day, had a massive riff uh, over an injury when he wanted to come off and Keith wouldn't take him off. Keith left him out of the team, had a major he didn't speak for about 15 years. But every time Archibald played, did he score? The first 10 games that Keith put him back in the side, he scored. Yeah. Why? Because he was playing for Tottenham Hotspur Football Club. Yeah. His top, top, top draw. And players must recognise that they play for Tottenham Hotspur. Not from, he's the man that picks the team. He's the man that decides to take Do you see any of that? Do you see any players not playing? No, no I don't know. I've got to be honest. Um, I think that players have lost, con lost confidence. Um, I think they've lost uh, a bit of belief, not just in, in themselves. It, when bad results go against you, yeah. that's how it is. But I don't see, I don't see an outright rebellion. You know, like at, at Manchester United under Mourinho, I could see a rebellion. Yeah. I don't see that under Pochettino. I see the players love them. They love them. They work for them. It's just not going our way. So you can uh, see Pochettino stand for a long while. If Pochettino um, leaves this football club, I think he will be a massive loss to our football club. Mm. I think that he's the best manager we've had in many, 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 many a year. Yeah. And uh, I, for one, want him to stay for the rest of his career. Yeah. He's that good. Um, we're just having, a, you know, football is an emotional sport. And it's a very reactionary sport. We all react, and I'm no different. You know, I'm, I'm absolutely standing devastated, gutted at this performance and result. I'm gutted. 
but I'm also wise enough to know that football is that way. You have your ups, you have your downs, and sometimes you um, you come out of the lull very quickly, and other times it takes a little while longer. Like I said, it just triggers a great performance, a great goal, something magical, um, and it, suddenly you're flying again. Um, so I When's that going to happen, Mickey? When's it going to happen? I think that, I think we'll win, <laughs> win Tuesday night, and I think we'll go to Anfield and really put on a show. Yeah. I actually think we can go there and win, and people will say, oh, what an idiot, being positive. Well, hey, I'd rather be positive than think my team's going to lose. You know, I, I went, as a player, I went into every game, every single game I ever played, believing I was going to win. Yeah. And if you believe anything different, then you're on the way to losing. You know, you've got to believe you're going to win. Because that gives you a best, and as a fan, I believe my team's going to win every time they walk out of the park. And rightly so, because this team has won more games that I thought we were going to win than they've lost. Yeah. So believe, believe, have confidence in your team, have confidence in your players. I get the frustrations and the anger that we've lost, or we've drew today, and we've lost them. We've lost, I get it, because I feel the same way. I get frustrated and angry, um, but I'm... I rise above it. I, I, I always rise above it and think, okay, we're in a lull, right? Let's see out this lull and then get on a 10, 15 game unbeaten run and we're right back in the, in the mix again, you know? I don't let it um, wreck my season or wreck my thoughts about the individuals or wreck my thoughts about the manager or the team. This team can still go places this season. Are you still confident in the top four? 100% I am. Yeah. Blimey, what, what are we? Eight games in the season? Nine. Nine games in the season. <laughs> like there's, there's 30. There's, there's uh, 20, 29 games to go. 29 games to go, right? And we're talking about top fours beyond reach. Wow, really? But there's so much negativity, particularly on Twitter and social media. Well, yeah, and a lot I'm, of people who even said they want Pochettino out. Uh, hey, that, listen. Well, like I said, it's a reactionary thing to a bad performance or a bad result or a, a run of bad results or a run of bad performance. Everybody reacts in the way they react. And, yeah. and the one thing that you should always try to do is with a bad performance or a bad result, before you start messaging shit messages, you know, negative, uh, we're shit, we're crap, we're this, we're that, we might well have been on the day, but, but don't react. Don't put messages out there that sort of imply that this club's gone to the port or gone to the port. You know, take a day, take a day to think about it, yeah. calm down. And the most Pochettino, for instance, do team talks yeah. after a game till Monday. Why? Well, because if, like, when we lose by Munich, no doubt he's angry, frustrated, uh, and, and all of the wrong things get said. Yeah. And that's how fans react, that's how we react. So I react. I'll go home tonight and I'll kick the cat. Well, I won't. Sorry, I'll take that back. I'll withdraw that comment because I haven't got a cat. But I'll go home tonight and I'll fit the telly, etc. Um, and, and, and I'll do things because I'm upset and I'm, I'm angry and I'm frustrated. Yeah. But it's all reactionary to a bad performance or a bad result. I try to sort of go home, allow myself to have a night's sleep, run it all through, and then tomorrow I come out, I'm more calm, and I'm able to actually analyse and assess the game in a much better way um, than when I'm reacting. Make sure you play late, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So much more, um, don't be so reactionary to bad performances, bad results. They happen, it's football. Um, the best players in the world play crap. The best tennis players lose um, in the first round some tournaments. It happens, rise above it. I, Look, I say it all, all this with an education from the inside. I've been on the inside of football. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I know what it's like to play crap. I know what it's like to lose a game that we should have won. I know what it's like to lose three. Well, I, I don't know if I ever lost three. I know what it's like to be on the, the, the back of criticism from a really bad performance, right? But I was brought up to recover quick. Recover quick from the downside so you're ready for the next game. So that's why I don't carry... Um, negativity around with me. Tonight I will, tonight I'll go home and I'll sulk all night long because we were poor. Um, but come tomorrow, I'll be back on the right, I'm ready to go again Tuesday. And that's how we have to view things at this moment in time because it will turn, it's just when. And these boys, these players, um, you know, what pleased me today was the character, they kept going, 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 going. You know, and that's a start. Now we have to build on the start that, look, we didn't quit. 
but we've got to rediscover our best form. Um, but recover, recover because it's gone. You, don't worry about things you can't affect, worry about the future, things that you can affect. You know? And that's how we were brought up. That's why I recover quickly from a, a bad team performance now because I know that that's the next game will put it right. You know? It's hard, it's hard, but hey, it is what it is at the minute and we've got to get on with it. Uh, and it's important that we all stick together because remember, you know, we, we win as a team, we lose as a team. And when we talk about a team, it's not just the 11 players on the pitch, it's the five subs, it's the manager, it's the staff, it's the washer lady, it's the security guy, yeah. it's the fan in the stand singing yeah. the names. We're all part of that defeat and if we all stick together, we're much more able to put it right together than if we all straight string out and go all our separate ways. No, that's not what this is about. We're in a low, we're in a bad, bad place at the minute. Let's stick together, let's all pull the same way and you'll find in two or three weeks time we're seeing, wow, good job we stuck together. Mickey, I'm more impressed that I've got nearly 21 minutes out of you. <laughs> yeah, I've just played. <laughs> Listen, you know what, you know what, guys? Let, let me leave you this thought. That I think I've said this before, mind you. I'll say it again, right? there's three kinds of people in this world. Um, the ones who can count and the ones who can't. Mickey, thank Love you very you much. <laughs> Come on, you. Very few people understand the stock market. Football Index gives users the opportunity to trade and make money with something that they love, the beautiful game.